want 112,000 today. We don't want to die. Death is a constant reminder here. The more people we kill, we invent. You ain't supposed to be alive. Killing, shooting people, doing whatever I had to do. We have to make a living. I want him dead. I want his family dead. I know how to grind. I started from the bottom. Never ran on your friends. Race to rackets. It's rough on a black man. Hold up, we're gonna blow this whole... What's up, people? Tonight, we're going to talk about James Quarterfield Baker, a gangster out of NY. He was a stick-up kid slash enforcer. See, I typed in his name in the search bar, and I saw that Brian Gibbs did a story on him. So I clicked the video, watched it, and he didn't really give us much information out on him. He didn't even use his full, like his real name. So here's my version. Now, he was under Donnie Smallwood, the kingpin out of Brownsville, NY. He was a part of a crew called Wild Bunch. He was one of Donnie Smallwood, main men of security. So when you hear rappers say they always keep a shooter with them, that was Quarterfield. Now, when you look at Quarterfield, you don't think of security when you see his size, but the guns made up for it, and he didn't hesitate to use it. Now, Donnie was a hood celebrity, and he had a couple M's. He gave back to the community and the love and respect was out of this world. Quarterfield didn't like how the same people that show him love act like he didn't exist once Donnie was around. If you're a shooter, it's okay to play the background. A lot of guys can't just get money and fall back. He noticed in the night spot, certain top-notch females only mess with bosses. A lot of the kingpins was running through celebrity divas, models, and R&B queens. He wanted that spot, and he started to become very envious of Smallwood. Everyone wants that number one spot instead of waiting their turn. But besides that, he had his hand in everything. You know, dealing drugs, sticking up shit. A lot of people compare him to Omar Little from The Wire on the internet. But every hood had an Omar. There was an Omar in Baltimore. There was an Omar in Philly, New York, Chicago. When he came around, guys just gave it up whether it's drugs or money, and even if he was just there to hang out. Now, that's just the reputation he carried. He would stick up a spot maybe twice, and by the third time, they will already have something waiting for him to pick up. Just like the scene from The Wire, when Omar was leaning on the building smoking a cigarette, something just dropped from a building. He would just pull up in his bins, and someone would run up to the car and just hand him a bag full of money. It got so crazy, sometimes he wouldn't even bring a gun. See, just because you're a drug dealer, that do not mean you was tough. A lot of drug dealers just wanted money and was doing so well that they would rather pay someone than go to war. The same guys that would extort them would be the same guys protecting them. So it was just like paying for protection. Now, look at all the gold he's wearing. Now, you might be thinking, what's so important about the gold he's wearing? Everybody was doing that. And when you say everybody, you're talking about rappers like Rock Kim. Biz Marquis, LL, and Slick Rick. The difference is he wasn't getting a rap check or didn't have security with him all the time. So to be young walking around with that much gold on in the ghetto just shows you're a dangerous man. You was the man having two gold rings on your fingers, but rings on every finger, that was a big deal. He was ahead of his time. We have guys now today in their 40s and 50s saying that was big bro. That was the big bro back in the day. <laughs> They would receive lots of dollars from him during the time. He would buy out the ice cream truck for the whole block. Donnie Smallwood would send his security team to pick up and drop off his son from school. One day, he decided to send Quarterfield to pick up his son. Quarterfield thought it would be a good idea to hold his son for ransom and ask for $50,000. I mean, if that's all he wanted, I'm pretty sure he could have worked something out with Smallwood without kidnapping his son. Come on now, you're dealing with a millionaire and we're talking about the 80s. But the money was exchanged and he got a son back. From there, he went independent and started his own drug operation with that 50K. And it was hard to move, but guys knew they wasn't dealing with something sweet. They were dealing with a killer. And, you know, so they had to get him at the right time in the right place. It was either 86 or 87 something. Quarterfield was found shot to death in his Mercedes Benz with bullets through his chest, head, and neck. 
crazy part is it was bullets from multiple guns. So there you have it. Another story about envy. When you're sitting at the top spot, the person that's the closest want that same spot. And it could be the smallest thing to make them start to dislike you. It could peep how the girlfriends look at you. Shit. It could even be the girlfriends in their ear telling them that they deserve more. Just like the scene from The Sopranos, the boss, Tony, went into a coma. The two guys that were under him, Paulie and Vito, were supposed to give Tony wife money. And they were supposed to kick up the Tony, but they sat on the money and told her things were slow. As soon as he came out the coma, everyone celebrated, except for them. And you should have saw the look on Vito's face. Because when the balls die, they up the rank. When Tony comes out of the coma, they didn't waste no time giving the wife the money. That just shows you. Your team could be loyal in your face, but you'll never know how someone really feels, especially a criminal. Anthony Jenkins, aka Nuke, was charged for the hit. And he was the son or, or the godson of Smallwood. And he was about that action also. And I heard he served all his time in his home now, so that's good. That's all for now. Shout out to the boy Jeezy Hancho. I told you I had you. I had to squeeze this into my lineup. And this week is a very super busy week for me. And editing these videos can take up most of the day, believe it or not. I might have to hire an editor. <laughs> but I appreciate all the love from you all. Don't forget to hit the like button. Subscribe, comment. If you're new, like, subscribe, comment. I say the same shit every video. I'm out.